Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us back here at Tago Cyber's channel. We're, of course, sitting here once again with Shannon. And I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but there's another big security issue in the world right now, the Log4j problem. So, Shannon, can you explain to people what's really going on here and why virtually everybody's affected? Sure, Michael. So Log4j is essentially a code um, component that a lot of technologies use. And what Log4j does is it helps software platforms, hardware platforms create logs. So if you think about if you have a firewall or you have a software, you want to generate logs if there's errors or if something's going on. And Log4j allows that to happen. So a lot of organizations decided to use it. It's a very, um, I would say, trusted piece of software. And that's why it's affected so many people. Mm -hmm. um, it's used basically to write logs. So if you you have you know a technology that you want to write a log, you use Log4j. And um, so it's not just organizations that are having to worry about patching their own servers, but it's all like the third party apps that they're using, you know, all the hardware components that may be within the environment that may be using Log4j to create logs or, you know, third party softwares and stuff. And that's why it's such a big vulnerability. The Department of Homeland Security actually calls this the worst vulnerability ever in the past decade. Wild. Yeah, yeah. So so what's how does this get exploited then? Is, is it the fact that you can write stuff down that people take advantage of that side of it? Like what actually happens here that, that, that makes this such a humongous deal? So it's, um, from what I understand, the vulnerability is a remote code execution vulnerability, which basically means that somebody from outside that's unauthenticated uh, because of this vulnerability can basically get in, insert code, and execute code through this vulnerability. So the easiest way that I could explain it is if you go and park your car somewhere and you lock your car, and then somebody that's unknown to you walks up to the car and says, hey, start the engine from outside the car, and then the engine starts. That's the easiest way that I can explain this vulnerability um, yeah. in layman's terms. Or, you know, they walk up to the car and say, hey, roll down the windows, and the windows roll down in your car. So, yeah, these types of remote code execution vulnerabilities are really serious because of the amount of things that attackers can do. Unfortunately, when these vulnerabilities, um, and really what happened is that um, Apache, um, patched the vulnerability. But when they patch the vulnerability and tell their customers, hey, we've released a patch, they have to release details about what the patch is for. So they basically said, you know, hey, we found this like critical vulnerability in our software and we patched it and you should update it. But then all of a sudden, all the cyber criminals go, hey, there's a vulnerability that we can exploit. And it only takes now, nowadays, it takes like a day or two for proof of concept or POC exploits to be developed. And that's what we've seen really quickly happen with this because it's so easily um, exploited, this vulnerability that the cyber criminals have come out with exploits. So we see now um, there's worms, there's botnets, there's uh, malware um, threat actors, as well as ransomware threat actors now attacking and looking for and scanning the internet for vulnerable um, pieces of hardware or p uh, software platforms that are using Log4j. Yeah, yeah. The, the joke that I had heard out of it was uh, ransomware is going to get on your smart toaster and it's going to charge you a dollar every time you want to heat up a bagel. So yeah, exactly. And that and that's the that's I think why the Department of Homeland Security is saying that this is worse ever because there's so many companies that use it. So it could be, it could be, you know, any of your smart appliances, um, any of the software, you know, software as a service, you know, the cloud platforms that you use, like um, I think even Minecraft, Minecraft use Log4j. So they've uh, had to patch their servers. And then um, the thing that I've seen as well is that um, Minecraft also allows um, people that develop games for their platform to host their own servers. And some of those are now being attacked by ransomware actors and such. So it's it's really important that organizations um, that have developed software or that have hardware scan their environments, figure out whether or not they're using Log4j, and then release patches for it. Yeah, that's interesting. So is there something that your average person should be doing at this point that they should do? Or just basically update your devices ASAP as soon as the update. Exactly. Come. Check for updates um, from software vendors. See if there's anything out there um, that you could possibly update. Of course, always keep your operating systems up to date, whether it's on your laptop, computer, or mobile phone, because mobile phones are also a concern as well. 
Um, but for the ordinary citizen, the, the I think one of the most important things and the simplest things that they can do to protect themselves is to get credit monitoring, as well as if you're not actively pursuing loans or uh, applying for credit cards, then lock your credit. And that prevents a lot of things from happening if your data is breached. It prevents identity theft um, and credit being opened in your name. So that's, I think, the one thing besides password management that you can do to protect yourself. Wonderful. Well, Shannon, thank you for coming on and walking us through this. Everybody, as you know, these will continue to happen and we will continue staying on top of them. So please follow along as we continue on this journey. But for now, Shannon, you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too, Michael.